All right, what's up guys? So to finish off our keyframe section and our keyframes lectures of the actual Adobe Premiere Pro Masterclass, I'm gonna be adding a exercise now here at the end where I'm gonna work through this sequence and overall create it from just three long, boring clips and a song to uh, a, a nice sequence. And I'm gonna be focusing on how to actually create this boring three clips into a very cool, entertaining, uh, much quicker sequence than like the, the three minutes or the two minutes it already is. And um, I'm going to be massively improving this sequence via and uh, using keyframes. And um, basically, we're going to be jumping straight into it. So first off, I want to actually reposition some of these clips. So the three clips are one of me um, testing out my, uh, well, all the clips are of me testing out a, uh, a glide cam. And, um, you know, one of them is uh, me from the front coming over to the sea or the kind of river. The next one is me from the back. And then the third one is the actual footage of what you see on my camera while I was recording this process as well. So I want to start ideally, right, with um, this shot of me right here. And then kind of chop to uh, this th this shot of, um, or actually I probably want to start with my shot of me up here, then chop to my shot of actually showing the water, then chop to me behind here. But um, overall, let's just go ahead and jump into creating this. So first off, I'm going to actually go ahead and chop up this first clip to where I'd want to start it. And I probably want to start it when I'm taking this first step right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just chop that down and bring that over to here. So if I give this a play, this is how it's going to be starting out. Okay, it's interesting, definitely. So right here with this buildup right here, okay, I want to obviously not have just boring, stale, nothing going on. I want the song to be building up to that drop right there. Uh, so I'll, I'll open this up so we can see that drop a little bit better, but that drop is that one right there. So just before this drop, I want it to be uh, zero decibels. Then on, on the beginning right here, obviously I'm gonna add a keyframe to tell that that. Then on the beginning of this one right here, I want that to be minus 35 decibels because that's quite low and that's building up now as you listen to this. This is actually creating a nice build up. Okay, nice, very nice indeed. So if we listen to this again, creating a nice build up, slowly, slowly coming to the drop, coming to the drop and then it drops. See, now I want to replicate that same thing, but with the opacity of this image here. So I want to create a uh, keyframe right there on about five seconds, come to the beginning and put that opacity to zero. So that is a build up now to 100. And it's slowly building up, slowly building up, and then it drops. And on that drop right there, I think on that drop is a perfect excuse, okay, is a perfect excuse to then bring in this clip here, which is, um, hold on, let, let me just go ahead and highlight all of these, right click, unlink, and uh, and just go ahead and delete the audio lay layers of them because we don't really need the audio for this uh, at all. We could then drag that up to the next layer. But on that drop, I wanna bring in this particular clip here, and this is actually going to be the, uh, the, the camera view of what's going on on screen. So I need to actually chop this in because I know this doesn't fully start until about the middle, about right here before I actually start the movement. Yep, I believe that's, that's the movement right there. So I'm just trying to line this up correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a chop. And I'm gonna bring this over here to where this beat drops right here. I'm gonna go to about here. Okay, right there. And what I'm actually gonna do for this particular shot right here is I'm actually gonna have this shot. Um, I could just uh, bring the opacity up. However, I think I'm gonna have kind of like a flying in shot. Okay, so I need to have this on the second beat. This is already flown in. So I'm gonna put a scale, a scale, um, animation, toggle animation on the scale, aka creating a keyframe right there. Then I'm going to come to the beginning and just go ahead and make the scale right here uh, 2000. So it's going to actually zoom mad quick just like that. And if we give this a play right now, it is going to be building up of me walking, building up, building up, building up. And then it's going to drop just like that. Okay, so let's go back here, tweak this a little bit actually. That's a little bit too slow for my liking. I think if I bring that over, just give that update a play. Okay, that's very cool. And I could even do the opacity uh, when it actually gets there on 100. Yep, and then the opacity on the beginning on zero. So that this is a nice fade in and it looks like it kind of slams in just like that. And in fact, on the build up to here, I want to create it at this point to be uh, 50. However, um, on the beginning, I want to make that 100, okay? So this is actually going to look like it's zooming out of me, zooming out of me, 
coming closer, coming closer, and then smashing on with the actual view of what's going on in front of my camera and not focused on me. And in fact, I can actually smash that shot on right there and leave that playing for a sec. And then on that next beat here, where it's actually a practical beat to change up the clip, we could actually bring in this number two right here, which is going to be the shot of me from behind, and actually just go ahead and click on this number three, go ahead and switch that back to effect controls, and actually just go ahead, come over here, and go ahead and copy paste that particular animation right there by just highlighting everything and copy pasting it, and then clicking here, which is where we're going to want to tra transition out, and just control V'ing that after we uh, control C to copy and then control V to paste. And now we just have to uh, actually just readjust this a little bit. So for example, um, let me just zoom in right in on these keyframes. What we need to do is take that keyframe, put it here, and basically just switch these around. So let's throw that one to the side and that one to the side. Go ahead and bring that here and bring that here. And then just try put those as a similar position as we had before. So this is now going to do the opposite effect and it's going to zoom in. So if we look at this now, in fact, we might have to just bring these out a little bit so it's a, so it's a little bit better. If we just go ahead and bring these out even a little bit more and just go ahead and put a cut right here. If we play this now, this should zoom in and then zoom out to this next clip of me from behind. So that zooms in very nicely. And that zooms in extremely nicely, except we need to cut this second clip to a place where it actually would make sense for me to be at this point. So I would probably be over here stepping quite close because you see our footage was obviously pretty close up so it looks like I'm not going to be all the way back here I'm going to be pretty close right here so I might get that step movement you see where I'm just stepping to that next rock and I'm actually just going to go ahead and cut that there go ahead and bring that underneath here so it's going to look like a nice transition and um, in fact when that zooms out real quick we could actually be now zooming into this right here okay so in fact I'm going to actually create a uh, a scale keyframe drag that to the beginning and create a hundred on this one that I'm on right now so it's a gradual zoom in now on me right here and in fact I'm gonna actually keep bringing this in for a little bit longer probably to over at about here maybe even just a bit before drop that there and we can actually just go ahead and give this a play from the beginning if I just go ahead and render the ins and render into out see what we're looking at within the sequence right here and overall I think there's no denying it right that this was a very basic sequence and overall just via the use of a you know couple few keyframes here and there just via the clip dimensions the opacity and also the decibels for the track we're creating a much more interactive overall um, consuming and uh, attention grabbing sequence as you can see right here it's me walking with the uh, the glide cam right here and then it's gonna smash into this clip where you could see this amazing river going on right here this end then it's going to zoom out just like that and be zooming into me just like that and in fact we can go here and uh and 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 and, and maybe just start bringing this out now so in fact we could go to about here uh just so it's a little bit in at a keyframe at 100 opacity come here to where it's ending just go ahead and put that on zero go ahead and chop that out and uh and just go ahead and do the same thing here where we could actually go to line up where that would be um actually add a keyframe here go to the end and actually just add that to minus 35 so it comes in on the same place that we left it on or that we began it on and then if we go ahead and put that out point there go ahead and render in and out we're going to be taking a look at an extremely amplified and leveled up sequence to the one we originally were looking at aka those three clips so here we go very nice so far extremely nice in fact the only thing I might do is add a little bit more movement to that middle shot but overall it's looking very cool very nice much more entertaining sequence than it was before the only thing I want to do for this particular one is maybe add a little bit of movement but actually I, I reckon it's all right we'll give that one more play and I reckon we are done with our keyframe section of the Adobe Premiere Pro Masterclass on screen right now this is looking like an extremely nice example we've done a pretty cool transition at the beginning and the end of that as well using keyframes and overall this is a very very amplified sequence let me just let it roll through one more time and then we'll be moving on with the Adobe Premiere Pro Masterclass